so <laughs> we're reading gingerbread man. Um, yes. This is so bad. So this is the story of John Paul Henry and his amazing Supreme Court case. I have a Christmas story for you. So put down your scissors and stop talking the board. Grab a friend and sit in tight. Are y'all ready? <laughs> there, there once was a man named John Paul Fenry, and he was sentenced to death. Death, no if, ands, or buts, but on a poor girl that he leave cuts. For this he was under judgment, but he felt his sentence was a violation of his eight and eleven month. By the state of Texas, the jury was not permitted to hear the mitigating evidence the defense should. The mitigating evidence claimed that he was Sorry about this next Mentally retarded. <laughs> in 1990, he went to the Supreme Court, I believe, and every trial he asked, so shall that he receive. But again, he was convicted without a, mur a murmur, sentenced to death, convicted of capital murder. Psych evaluations showed he would be a threat, so they decided to kill him. Bet. The vision stated self incrimination. On a 6-3 vote, the case stood, shocking the nation. Justice O'Connor wrote on the matter, Rape isn't funny. In fact, it's the latter. <laughs> His mental stability has no effect on the man's credibility, she said with a shrill as she popped in her pills. I don't know why she's mad at A murder is a murder. It is no laughing matter. Justice Thomas believes this statement to be vile spatter. The most recent court gave the jurors a chance to thoroughly look at the mitigating evidence. <laughs> he believes supporting the case was an improper report because support of this case would send mixed signals to the Texas courts. About what the parameters of the death penalty are, alas, Thomas spoke to no avail, and Penry was convicted and sentenced to hell. Not really. <laughs> okay, so we turn the lights on too. Leave the fire. Leave the fire. Yeah, can we just have it? Okay, so as I said in my poem, I don't know if you guys caught it, but um, there was three questions that the uh, jurors were asked to think. When, they, when considering Henry's case, and um, his mental uh, his mental retardation was not one of them. So uh, they were forced to look at whether his conduct committed was a reasonable expectation for a death penalty. Um, it was whether, they were also so we're supposed to look at whether it was probable that he would be a continuing threat to society, as well as looking at uh, if the killing was a unreasonable in response to any pro provocation by the deceased, which there wasn't. But mainly the big um, thing that happened before this was Henry V. Lennon in uh, Texas, which stated that he was committed a murder and sentenced to death, which the Supreme Court overruled in 1990, saying that it was not right to sentence someone to death if they are mentally ill, which then caused a, like, a cause and effect of uh, many states outlawing the execution of mentally ill patients and people and criminals, which is why Henry B. Johnson is a very important case, because now mentally ill people don't be killed doing murders. Yeah.